Welcome fans to another Dark Side of Mana game. This time we're going to be going through how to get started with Visual Studio 2019. But not just that, we're also going to be covering Mana Game 3.8, which is due for an imminent release. It's not released already. As I said, Mana Game 3.8 is coming out, and this is this is really the major update of the year. Uh, hopefully it's the one good thing that's going to come out of 2020. Fingers crossed we get released in 2020. Uh, this brings a whole new raft of things, including .NET Core and .NET Standard support for both Windows, GL, and DX platforms. They've also changed the tooling for how we deliver Monogame. Gone are the days of the MSI. Still need that for like Monogame 3.7 or supporting all 3.7 packages and solutions. But as you transition forward into using 3.8, that's it. The real good thing about this is, is that you're no longer bound to any specific version or install. You simply use the latest. And to update, you simply switch and change. And you can switch and change back as you wish. It makes life a lot easier and a lot better to maintain. Additionally, everything's been updated to use the latest and greatest, which is now Visual Studio 2019, which has been continually updated and refreshed over the year with lots of great new features and Monogram is now keeping pace and now with this whole change to the .NET Core Star delivery it's great and also if you stay tuned for the other videos coming very soon you'll see also why it's great for also other platforms to develop on not just Windows so in this session like quite a few others in the series of these getting started we're going to cover out what you need to actually get started in developing with different platforms, whether you're working for desktop, whether you're working for Android, iOS, Mac, Windows 10, or in building content pipeline projects. This video will give you everything you need to know to get started and get running. So when you install Visual Studio 2019, like 2017, we have this new component style installer. On its own, you're only going to get the core editor, which will allow you to view, edit code, look at web pages and things like that, but not do much of anything else. But we'll go through as we in this session of what you need to get started and what, what components you'll need for all the different platforms. This install is easily reusable, so you can quickly launch it back up to add more components or take them off. And also, more importantly, the Visual Studio installer now also keeps your Visual Studio up to date in one way. You simply launch the installer. It tells you if you have updates and then updates them and gives you one way to actually keep everything moving. If we're installing for .NET or for the basic uh, Windows kind of platforms, then we need to install the .NET desktop environment. You install whichever options fit, fit you, but more importantly at the moment is now .NET Core is now a key part of .NET development. So you need to ensure that, that by default, they are in the .NET Core development tools and the, and the core runtime are there because these are also going to be key for when we're working with Monogame now as we transition to this .NET Core style approach of a deployment. You have everything in there and you have everything you need to actually get running. If when you start developing, you need to make sure the fact that you're working for as many platforms as you want to support, they need to make sure your Monogame project is also set up that way. So be sure to check out the video I've previously done about having a multi-platform Monogame project. I may look to revise this or update it in the future um, as 3.8 develops, just to make sure you've got the latest and greatest information to get going. Now, as I said previously, 3.8 is a major release and wholly changes the landscape about how you get Monogame now. We are, it's now using the whole NuGet package delivery system. This will give you not only your templates for Visual Studio for all the platforms that's supported on, it also gives you command line interface options for installing or creating templates. And there will be another video session which shows you if you want to use Monogame without using Visual Studio, then that is now even possible. Check out that video for more details. Monogame simply got way cooler now. And it's really a sign of the times is that it's modern, it's fresh, and it's keeping up to date with how you really want to develop. 
once you've got your Visual Studio installed, then you'll need to install the modern game templates where previously these were included the MSI that will be deployed. Now it's a simple case of you launch Visual Studio, go into a no code, go into no code or go, go into an existing project, launch the extension manager, which is available in the menu under extensions, extension manager, and just search for modern game. And you'll get the latest and greatest templates there. This will be constantly refreshed and updated. And if you need to, you can switch versions if you find one doesn't work for you. With the templates, realistically, you're only going to want to change these if there's a new platform that you want to support in your project. Let's get it going. I recommend keep checking out the, update, the updates. If you want to use the development versions, then in the Getting Started Guides, it tells you how to get going. Once you've got the templates installed, you also need to get the tools. Again, this is another component that was part of the original installer. This now is a separate package we can get hold of. And this uses the .NET pipeline for accessing the tools registry, which is all hosted on NuGet. We simply need to open a command prompt. We need to make sure that we have the .NET Core SDK installed. If it's not running by default, you can go to this URL, get the latest SDK, it's quite small. In the command line, we'd simply then run this command here, .NET tool install minus G, which simply means it means open for everyone in the machine. And then we have the title of the package, which is .NET hyphen MGCB hyphen editor. And this is our nice content pipeline editor that we use within the project itself. Then we just need to run an additional command to install, to actually register the pipeline tool, MGCB hyphen editor slash slash register with your platform that registers with your operating system and also more importantly in Visual Studio. So then when you open in content projects, you simply double click on it and the editor will open. The tool is fully online. And again, if you want the development version of these, check the docs in Monogame for the additional parameters you need to specify. But for most people, this is all you need. Just two commands and you're done. You're up and running. So once you set up, what do we need to do? So as we've done previously, go through all the different platforms and what's needed. So for Android, we'll need a few extra components. So we'll need the mobile development for .NET to be able to actually do the basic Android setup. We're also importantly, we need to check into the mobile development with C++ line to ensure that we get the Android NDK, we get some of the development tools. And if you want the Google emulator for testing on your machine, if you haven't got a device, then this is also from in this package. I don't understand why it's moved. It's always been a funny thing, but it's case to note that the Microsoft emulator is now gone. It's not available in the Visual Studio Tools anymore. So all we have is the Google Android emulator, but significant improvements have been done to that make it work better on Windows. It simply didn't make sense to have two different emulators. But to be honest, if you're testing on Android, use a physical device. It's generally a lot simpler and easier. But Androids are quite a fragmented platform, so do what works best for you. But well, installing the components, setting a machine will enable you to start building for Android through Monogame. So when we're building for Monogame, just be aware it is a very fragmented platform. Different API levels for different devices, do your research. Make sure you understand when you're building, when you're targeting, what you intend to support. Likely you're gonna to have to do several different projects. That doesn't mean several different games, it just means you'd have to set up several different project templates to deploy to different API levels for publishing to the Google Store to the different devices you want to support. It's just the way it is. Ideally, make sure you test on a device. In most cases, I say test only on device. Use the Google image if you have to, if you haven't got a device, something to test on. But physical testing is also very crucial, but the Visual App Center is available now. You can build, test, deploy. It's all integrated with a pipeline now. So I highly recommend it. Go into appcenter.ms and read all about it. It's a very powerful service. Use it. It's that what it's there for. So what about iOS and Mac? 
Now, again, not much has changed in here apart from the fact that how everything works. With Studio 2019, we just need the mobile development.net. So if you've got that for Android, you've got it there for Mac. Uh, well, you've got it there for iOS. You can, again, build design on Windows. But to build or to test, you're going to need a Mac, unfortunately. Nothing's changed in that environment when it comes to mobile development. When we're building, you can, like I say, you can develop your game on Windows. It's just another target platform. You can build, fine. When you need to then actually compile it, you're going to have to then connect to and deploy that to a actual Mac build host. We'll go through that in a little shortly. Again, like any other platform, testing on a physical device is critical. But again, App Center comes to the rescue as it also has test and build pipelines for working with iOS and Mac devices as well. Well, iOS devices, less than less about Mac. Mac is a case of you need a Mac. So we're talking about a backyard host. What do we mean? What it really means is that you need an actual Apple Macintosh machine. You can buy a Mac Mini off eBay. I got one for about £50 some years ago. It works well uh, as long as you keep it up to date and install the prerequisites. So you simply need the latest version of iOS the device supports. When you're looking for a type of Mac, make sure it has at least uh, Yuzma 10 or 10.10 .10 and above, as you can have issues when you're installing all the toolings. Um, and you will also need to make sure you've also registered for an Apple Dev Center account, which means you have to pay money to have an Apple Dev account and go through all of the rigmarole of getting that set up. However, once you've got your Mac and you're running, you can now install Visual Studio for Mac, which is free. It's the new and improved rebranded Xamarin Studio, all with new bells and whistles since Microsoft bought Xamarin. Uh, any extended capabilities, you're going to still going to need an MSCM subscription just to get leverage them. Well, it's not required. You don't have to have it to do it, but it will work. And the, if you follow the link here, this is the updated guide now for getting Mac in, Visual Studio for Mac installed on your Mac. It's a good job it's not raining, else I'd make it a Mac as well, being Mac and a Mac and a Mac, but I digress. You start the instructions of getting it set up, installed, and then you'll simply target that when you're doing build, and then the build will take over on that machine and then spit out the build for you to then test on and push to a device. It's fun, it's frolicking, but you will still need a Mac. So if we're building for Windows, and that's either Windows DX, GL, or more specifically here, we're talking about Windows 10 UWP. And if we're targeting the Windows 10 devices, then we're also going to need the universal Windows platform development. Again, it's just one option to install. And if you use the default options as shown here, You'll have the latest two versions of the Windows 10 SDK. Again, a bit like Android needs to check which APIs and versions you want to support. But the good thing is that because this is Windows 10, you're only ever going to have one project because it's build one for all. That's the same if you're doing for Windows, whether you're doing for Xbox or anywhere in between. We don't have phone devices anymore. That's gone. I'm st still too soon. Uh, the great thing is that when you're building for Windows 10 is that you are simply building for an API level platform. When you're running this, if there's a feature or something that doesn't light up on a certain device, it will simply just not light up. There's no failures, no crashes. It's not going to suddenly throw an error message up to your user because nothing works. It'll just go, I can't do that and move on. Or again, make sure you test on different devices in different ways that you're, how you're doing things. If you're developing on Windows 10 machine, you also need to make sure you enable develop mode, which is in the settings Windows update. And there you'll select develop mode and enabling side loading. Anyone who wants to test your app, they don't need to have full development mode. They just need to enable side loading in the same settings update settings for development. Uh, it's very easy to run, easy to deploy. And you also have things like the App Center there as well, where you can deploy to multiple machines, if you will. When you're working it, like I say, with UDP, it is a platform that's built to just work. 
and you simply deploy and things will work. If you're deploying to an Xbox and you have a gamepad fine, you then deploy to Windows, there's no gamepad, it'll still just work, it won't complain. Uh, if you then decide to deploy to a HoloLens, then things will light up because you have spatial mapping and things like that, but nothing will stop working. Oh, good. The Creators Development Program still exists today and is still running strong. There's lots of ID and Xbox developers are building games using Monogame and deploying in the various ways. So if you're interested in deploying to the Xbox or publishing to Windows 10, then I highly recommend going onto the program and talking to them. Um, Monogame does have a native access for the Xbox still, but you need to go through the whole ID and Xbox program to get access to that. So we have our platforms, everything's in there. We can all build, it's all great. Anything else we need to worry about? Well, as this is Monogame, and it's like almost any other game development project, in case of plan ahead, work out what platforms you want to support, what API versions you want to support, which devices you want and what screen sizes, and make sure that you're building a game in a good way that works for all those different platforms. Try to avoid having to have multiple different things. When you're working in game development, there's almost never, never too early. Get out there, have a devlog, start talking about your game, get people interested, and as leads into the next point, test often. And I don't just mean you test, run, build, you unit test, that's fine. But have other people play your game, have family members play your game, have people who hate your game play your game. And if you're lucky enough, also go to some of the different game conferences, Ran a little bit light on the ground in 2020. We kind of destroyed that. But there are still test servers and things out there, and people are willing to test. And if you use services like App Center, you can ship your game to any device and get a good feedback from them, including analytics, reports, and details back about what's going on. Test, 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 and test with other people who test in different ways to where you test. It's just the nature of the world. So that's been our guide to getting running on Visual Studio 2019 with Monogame 3.8. Stay tuned for more videos where we're we'll going to be talking about going through Mac deployment and also the new .NET CLI deployment for those who don't like UI. And as ever, solidarity, brothers and sisters, and everyone out there, have a great 2020. <laughs>